All right, let's not waste time you clicking this video because you wanna know the best hoodies on the market. So let's get going. Number one, the classic full zip from American Giant is indeed the greatest hoodie you can buy. Now this company is really worth the hype and there is a lot of hype surrounding this company. They actually sold out for like a year after Slate called this the greatest hoodie ever made, but it actually is a fantastic hoodie. It is belly, it is beefy, it is also slimming at the same time. For starters, Everything is made in the United States. The fabric is dyed in South Carolina and everything is like cut and sewn and put together in North Carolina. But even if you don't care about the whole made in the United States ethos, which is really important to the brand itself, it is still a spectacular product. They actually hired a former industrial designer from Apple to put this whole thing together. So there's a lot of thought and a lot of little details that make it worth the extra cost. So for starters, everything is 100% combed ring spun cotton with this nice textured rugged exterior. The thickness is 13 ounces per square yard and it's really worth emphasizing that's 100% cotton because just about every other hoodie in the market is made with a cotton polyester blend. For example, American Apparel's hoodie is 50% polyester and because American Giant is all cotton, it's a lot harder to make a hoodie that's fuzzy on the inside like this. So they put it through a machine that picks loops of thread out of the fabric, which is not cheap, but it is better. It's less likely than polyester to become brittle and tattered with washing and drying. And it also makes this really abrasion resistant as well. Details wise, it's got these really nice uh, metal tipped drawstrings here. It's a really high quality brass zipper as well. And the hoodie itself is double lined for some extra thickness as well, which is really nice, makes it really functional to wear. You've also got reinforced elbow pads, which I really like because that's likely where you're going to get the most wear in your hoodies, especially if you're like me and you slouch over a desk a lot as well. Also, there's double needle straddle stitching with high strength thread. That is the same color as the hoodie you buy, which is a small detail, but one a lot of people like. And it's got really thick and durable wrist cuffs and waistband as well, which will retain the elasticity as they age. The other detail I just wanted to mention is that they have this thing they're really proud of, which is these mobility panels on the side with some extra stretchy material here, which meant to give you some more mobility so you can move your arms around a lot without the hoodie itself moving up and down your body too much. The fit I'm a really big fan of myself. Generally in men's clothing, you've got the classic fits and the modern fits. Modern means that it's more sort of slim, more tapered to the body. This is a modern fit, which you don't often see in hoodies. There are a lot of hoodies out there that either have a squarish fit or a big baggy fit. And I'm gonna get into a couple of examples of those on this list. That doesn't mean they're bad hoodies, but I really like the modern fit here. It's got a lot of room up in the chest. It tapers down at the waist a bit. If you have an athletic frame, it's really gonna look good on your body. And you got high armholes here as well, again, for a more modern sort of streamlined sort of fit to it. It also has a really long torso as well, which I'm a big fan of because I happen to have a weirdly long torso. My friends say I look like a corgi, but if you don't, it helps you create like sort of an illusion of height. And a lot of people, they don't like that when you lift up your hands, you get to see a midriff in a lot of competing uh, hoodies out there. That doesn't happen with this because it has this nice long torso. The price, it is a little bit hard for some people to swallow. Uh, it's about a hundred bucks, $108 maybe. Now, that being said, you can, yeah, get like three or four old navy hoodies for that amount of money. But you will go through all those old navy hoodies and destroy them before you'll go through one American Giant hoodie. It is really built to last. It's really thick. It's really tough and burly. It's still very, very soft. And for all the reasons I mentioned earlier, like the cotton construction and so on, this does get better with age and with each wash, which is something you can't really say for a lot of polyester heavy hoodies out there. I'll say there are three sort of downsides to this product though. Number one, they say they have a lifetime warranty, but the warranty does not protect against regular wear and tear or like zippers being damaged from repeated laundering or just basically any of the things you're likely to do to the hoodie as it ages. It protects against manufacturer's defects, yes, but there are a lot of products out there where if they fall apart, they can like, you can send in your hoodie for a repair, like the next hoodie I'm about to talk to. And I'll do that for you free of charge. They don't have that with American, uh, with American Giant. So their warranty, it kind of isn't that great. Number two, it's a very burly uh, sort of hoodie. So it's hard to layer if you like putting a hoodie under your jacket. It's kind of hard to do with this one, unlike the next hoodie I'm about to talk about. Uh, that said, American Giant does have a mid-weight hoodie if that's like a big thing for you. So it's not really such a big deal. And number three, this sort of uh, V-shaped uh, kind of athletic fit, it doesn't work for all body types. So I do have another hoodie for you though, the second, the runner up on this list, which addresses all of those issues and is still a fantastic hoodie. And that is 
The 10 year hoodie from Flint and Tinder is my number two pick for the best hoodie you can buy. Also entirely made in the US, the cotton is from the Mississippi Delta and then everything is kind of put together in Los Angeles. The brand started out on Kickstarter. Apparently they were like the most successful fashion based Kickstarter of all time when they came out. Then Huckberry bought them. But anyway, this hoodie, it has a lot of similarities with American Giant besides the fact that it's all made in the United States. So you've got these nice metal tipped uh, drawstrings here as well, just like American Giant does. You got really high quality brass zippers here, just like American Giant. You get a nice little F and T on the aglets here as well, which is interesting. And the hoodie as well is double lined for extra warmth, like American Giant, which is a really big deal. I really like that, especially here in New York City where it gets really, really cold sometimes. There are a couple of other differences with American Giant though that I want to draw your attention to that could potentially like give it an advantage. Number one, this is a simple one, but as I mentioned earlier, this has more of a classic fit than the modern fit American Giant has. So it has like more of like a uh, sort of a, I don't want to say boxy, but it's more flat, it's more relaxed. It's not quite as loose around, uh, it's not quite as tight around the hips and broad around the chest and the shoulders. So that's something you're going for. So you got that going for it. Another thing is that Flint and Tinder does have a nice little pocket on the inside here. It's not massive, it's not super useful, but you can fit a few things in there. Another thing I wanted to mention is that this hoodie is actually easier to layer than the American Giant hoodie, which is quite a lot bulkier and thicker. Technically, this has more like ounces per yard. This material is 23 ounces, but it's just like a lot more material with the American Giant hoodie. So this one I find a lot easier to wear with my leather jacket. Plus the Flint and Tinder hoodie is about 10 bucks cheaper than American Giant. A couple potential downsides here though, uh, the elastic around the wrist here is not great. I've actually never once rolled up the sleeves on this hoodie. Nonetheless, it still sort of hangs down here. It goes like well onto my hand like that. Uh, I would like it to be nice and tight around the wrists, personally. And the other thing is that this is not 100% cotton. It's about 30% polyester, which is sort of like the big thing with American Giant. And it's why I really, really love that hoodie, just because it's going to age better than this one will. This might not age quite as well with each wash as American Giant. But nonetheless, you do get a 10 year warranty on this. And it's a legit warranty, unlike American Giant's warranty. This one, if you get a tear in it, for instance, if there's any holes in it, for any reason, even if it's just like you falling down and tearing it open, uh, you can send it to them as long as it's within 10 years, they'll send it back to you free of charge. So it's a very, very legit warranty and definitely like makes this worth some of the potential downfalls. Now, unless you think of me as some elitist bastard who would only spend over hundred bucks on a hoodie, I've got for you the best hoodie for under $50. And that is the Champion Reverse Weave hoodie without a shadow of a doubt it's the best hoodie on the market for under 50 bucks uh, you're guaranteed to get these for like yeah 50 dollars on amazon but on amazon i've seen it drop as low as 37 bucks for this hoodie and it really is outstanding quality you've got two layers in the hood itself for some extra insulation which as i keep on saying i'm a really big fan of the uh, cotton polyester blend varies depending on what color you get but generally speaking it's 80 percent cotton to 20% polyester, so it's actually more cotton than you'll get in the Flint and Tinder hoodie, but I mean, that's a thicker hoodie, but this is still nice and thick at 12 ounces. You got these stretch ribbed side panels for extra ease and mobility with these. You get a bunch of spandex as well in the wrist cuffs and down around the waist as well, so they're not gonna lose their elasticity anytime soon. And on top of that, it's double stitched around a lot of the stress points, like around the shoulder, which is really rare at this price point. The fit is baggy. This is a baggy sort of hoodie. I got a large, I could have gone for a medium, I guess, if I wanted like a more, you know, a slim sort of fit. But whatever kind of size you get on this, it's always going to be a sort of a baggy kind of cut. Like by that, I mean, you're always going to make a lot of room in the arms like this. Uh, it's always going to be relatively wide. That's just the sort of hoodie this is. But that's like not really a big deal for a lot of people. That's the kind of sort of fit they want from their hoodie. This is the kind of one that I wear when I'm like lying around the apartment or if I'm reading it in bed, that kind of thing. It's a cozy sort of hoodie. But all this extra size as well also means that it's not a bad hoodie for, you know, like uh, working out, for boxing, for running, that kind of thing, because you've got a lot of room to move in here. So I don't want to say it's baggy. It's just like, you know, you've got room to move in this hoodie, I guess is the better way to frame it. Uh, potential downsides are it is made in Honduras. This is not made in America. It's not American cotton. It doesn't have all those extra nice things a lot of people like about American Giant, Flint and Tinder, and so on. Uh, they are made in Honduras. I'm also not a big fan of these long wrist cuffs here. They're very long, and especially when like the upper arm is like so baggy, it gives like sort of a, it's kind of a funny sort of look uh, sometimes when you're looking at the arms. And you also have to contend with this little logo down by the wrist here, which not everybody likes. I'm not a big fan of like ostentatious branding myself. And there's also a lot of other versions of this hoodie where you also get branding on the chest as well. So that's something you will have to contend with. I mean, the very least you're gonna get this one down by the wrists. But you know, that's just like my own pet grab. It's not a big deal, especially for a hoodie of this quality at this frankly insane price point. 
Number five on my list of the best hoodies is the best hoodie for working out. And that is the Miles Everyday Pullover Hoodie, which is also surprisingly water resistant as well. A lot of companies out there, they'll make like water resistant hoodies or shirts, but they'll feel like they've been like sprayed with some sort of like weird chemicals, like weird and crunchy and doesn't really move very well. That's not the case with this hoodie from the very unusual and very interesting fitness company, Miles. So the thing with this hoodie is it's 96% cotton and 4% spandex. So it's a really good blend for athletic endeavors. It's made from French terry, so it's soft as hell, but it's also great at wicking moisture. That's what French terry is all about. But the big thing with this is it has a storm cotton finish, which makes it water repellent without sacrificing comfort or breathability. Like it protects from light rain. I wouldn't wear it in like a torrential downpour, but it does protect you from light rain, but it also breathes as well, which is something that a lot of these more water resistant fabrics out there do not have. It allows water vapor to pass through it into the environment so you can keep cool and dry underneath it. So it's made from French terry cotton. It's a storm cotton finish. It's got plenty of spandex in here as well. So it's very, very breathable, helps to wick away moisture and allows water to pass through it while also preventing water from passing from the outside into it. So it's a pretty unusual, pretty interesting sort of hoodie. I really like wearing it, even if it's like drizzling a little bit like it was in this video when I went outside to film. It's not a big deal with this hoodie. Potential downsides are that there's no way to put a phone in this hoodie if that's something you want when you're going out there running. Uh, in any event, I don't think hoodies are the place to put your phone when you're running because it'll bounce around a lot. That's more for strategic pockets on your pants or your shorts. That's in my opinion anyway, but yeah, there's no way to put your phone. It also attracts lint kind of easily in the washing machine. And also not everybody likes this reflective tab thing that you get uh, at the back of the neck when you put the hoodie up. But a lot of people really like it because it might make you a bit more visible when you are running at night or something like that. So it does serve a purpose. In any event, this is a hoodie that's just as good for snuggling on the couch as it is for going out for a run. And that is a pretty rare thing. Lastly, I thought I'd throw this one in here. This is the most eco-friendly hoodie. And dare I say it, it might be the most ethical hoodie out there. If that's something that you are very, very concerned by. So the company is Alson known and the hoodie is called the Sir Zip Hoodie, the Sir Zip Hoodie. So this is the company founded by Kelly Slater. He's won like 11 world championships in surfing, broadly considered to be the most successful, most well-known uh, professional surfer of all time. And Adenone is like a very kind of granola sort of company, uh, but it's pretty cool, man. So over 90% of Adenone's materials are organic or recycled or regenerated. Like they have board shorts that are made from fishing nets that are taken out of the water and stuff like that. A lot of it really is very cool. This hoodie here in particular, this is the Sir hoodie. It is made from a roughly equal split between organic cotton and hemp. And the reason those are very eco-friendly are that regular cotton accounts for over 25% of the world's pesticide use. But there's organic cotton, which requires 90% less water to grow. And again, 55% of this hoodie is hemp, which also requires very little water and no pesticides to grow. And hemp is famously durable as well. Now, it is true that this hoodie is made in China. So if you are very, very concerned about your carbon footprint, that might be a deal breaker for you. But I gotta say, they only work with factories that follow Fair Labor Association and Blue Sign standards. So like they really do put a lot of work into making this an ethical kind of product. I'd say this is probably the best hoodie for like a beach trip or for more temperate climbs. It is not the thickest, it's not the warmest hoodie out there. But the inside is designed to feel like a towel, which I really like. And it sort of, again, keys into the whole surfer ethos the brand has going for it. Potential downsides, it does sort of look a little bit worn in when you get it, which again is sort of like evocative of the whole like relaxed, chill surfer dude bro thing they've got going. Uh, ironically enough, at 100 bucks per hoodie, a lot of surfers simply cannot afford it, but guys like you might be able to, I don't know. And also the fit, it's a very relaxed fit. You know, it's not athletic, it's not boxy, it just sort of kind of drapes over the body. It's very, very relaxed. But again, that's the brand. All right, so those are my definitive picks for these six best hoodies on the market. No matter what your price point, no matter what your hobby, no matter what your passion, you can find a hoodie on this list for you. I've got links to buy all of these in the description below. And make sure you subscribe as well, because I've got a whole lot more fashion reviews and boot stuff and shoe stuff and all other kinds of men's fashion kind of stuff coming up.